How do these Medicare Part D prescription drug plans work? Hello, I am Kevin Knauss with insuremekevin.com. And when I work with a Medicare beneficiary, oftentimes one of the most confusing aspects of their health coverage is selecting a Part D prescription drug plan because none of them seem the same. They're just all kind of all over the map with different deductibles and co-pays and co-insurance. And that is because Medicare allows the plans to create alternate plan designs, member cost share structures, and they can be a little bit confusing. Now, these alternate designs must be equal to the standard benefit structure that Medicare creates. So let's look at that because Medicare puts out this standard structure every year. They kind of just update um, the cost, the member cost sharing. So for 2024, there will be a drug deductible of $545. And that means that you must spend the full retail over-the-counter price for your medications up to $545. Then you have satisfied the drug deductible. For some people, they may never even get out of the deductible phase. But for people that have higher cost brand name drugs and some expensive stuff, you can whip through that drug deductible in one or two months. Once you have met that drug deductible, Medicare says that you should pay no more than 25% of the drug costs in the initial coverage phase. So after the deductible, you go into the initial coverage phase. And that generally has co-pays and co-insurance associated with it. And the plan pays 75%. So you've done your deductible and you've moved through your coverage phase. And then when your out-of-packet costs reach $5,030, you go into the coverage gap. It used to be known as the donut hole. In the coverage gap, the member pays 25% of that retail cost. And you're thinking, well, they said I was supposed to pay 25% in the initial coverage and now I'm paying 25% in the coverage gap. Uh, what's the difference? And, during the coverage gap phase, to your benefit, the plan also recognizes these manufacturers' discounts. So you're paying a certain that 25%, and then there's the manufacturer's cost that goes in it, and then when all of that equals $8,000, you have hit the catastrophic phase. And during the catastrophic phase for 2024, everything goes to zero. The plan, you know, pays 100% of the drugs for the remainder of the year. Another way to look at it on a numbers basis is you have that drug deductible of $545 that you must get through. Then the initial coverage phase of $4,485. So you add those two numbers together and you get $5,030. Then in that coverage gap, you're paying 25%, which equals $742.50. Those manufacturers' discounts uh, are accrued and accumulate to $2,227.50. You add those together and you get $8 thousand dollars and you've hit your catastrophic phase so where the confusion and complications come in are these alternate plan designs that medicare allows the plans to develop so <laughs> there's and they all seem to be slightly different here's one that i've just kind of created out of thin air based on other plans that i've seen tier one and tier two drugs which are generally your generics and preferred generic drugs, the low cost drugs. Tier three, four, and five, they're the brand name and specialty drugs. Some plans, there may not be a drug deductible for tiers one and two. You go straight into the copay, you know, and that goes all the way until the coverage gap. But other drug tiers, higher drug tiers, you may have to go through that drug deductible and then you may go into 30 or 50 percent coinsurance. And, and that's the real confusing aspect because you're saying, but Medicare says I'm supposed to be paying 25 percent. It really all does average out actuarially for the 
average member. So nobody is average, so some people will be better off and other people won't be, depending on their drug costs and when they hit the coverage gap. But once you hit the coverage gap, then those tier one and tier two drugs pop up in cost, up to 25% of the over-the-counter retail amount, and tiers three and four can drop down to 25%. So, you know, some of the drug costs go up and some of the drug costs come down. And then once you get through that coverage gap and they're adding on that manufacturer's discount, you hit $8,000. That's the catastrophic phase, and you are paying zero after that. Hopefully, you never even get close to that. Um, but because of these alternate plan designs, it can be very confusing. I recommend to people, if you're not using an agent, to use Medicare.gov, put in your drugs, and be very specific about the dosage and the frequency of the drugs and whether it's brand name, maybe you can only tolerate a brand name drug or the generic. And then you'll get the total cost of the drugs and you can see what the costs will be in the deductible, the initial and the gap phase. And again, you may not ever reach, you may not get through the initial to the gap. And even when you get into the gap, you may not hit catastrophic. So it's kind of hard to know if the alternate plan design is benefiting you over the standard benefit design, but that's just kind of the way things are. You have to look at your particular situation, your drug costs, and finding a plan that minimizes your out-of-pocket costs for the year because these plans, they, they're trying to maximize their dollars um, on you with these different plan designs and putting the drugs in different tiers. So this is your way to kind of fight back or leverage the system using medicare.gov or having someone do the search for you to find out what plan is going to minimize your out-of-pocket costs for prescription drugs in 2024. And of course, we'll have another plan design and in, in, in different dollar amounts in 2025. Otherwise, if you have any comments or questions, you may leave those down below. For insuremekevin.com, I'm Kevin Canals.